In this video, we're going to be constructing an insertion sort as well as coding one. So let's dive in. What is an insertion sort? We need to know what it is before we code one. An insertion sort is another type of sorting algorithm. You are putting data in order from the smallest to the largest. You can adjust your code so it also outputs the largest to the smallest. You may be saying that's just like every other sorting algorithm we've done. And you're correct, but that's what a sorting algorithm does, but an insertion sort works a little differently. In an insertion sort, you'll be comparing a specific value or index to all previous values that have already been sorted. You are moving towards the beginning of an array, not towards the end of the array. It essentially gets split up between data that is unsorted and data that is sorted. Now, in a bubble sort, you move towards the top end of the array, comparing values that have not been sorted. So that is the difference here. So we're going to use playing cards as our example because that is the number one example to use when you're talking about insertion sorts. Now if you've ever played a card game, then you have done an insertion sort. So you've already done it. You got the knowledge of how it works. You have to put your cards in order. So let's take a look at the hand that we've been dealt. We've been dealt the ten of clubs, We've been dealt the seven of diamonds, so already our hand's screwed up. We've been dealt the three of hearts. Oh my, it's even getting worse. We've been dealt the nine of clubs. Oh geez, and we've been dealt the ace of spades. Now we're gonna be using the ace as the high end, and right now the ace is the only card in the right spot. So when we do an insertion sort, we don't look at the first item. We look at the second item. There's nothing to compare the first item to. So we start with the second item, and we compare it to the first item. So we start with the seven of diamonds. I take a look at my seven of diamonds. I take a look at my 10 of clubs and I say, you know what? I know my seven of diamonds is less than the 10 of clubs. So I'm gonna move my seven of diamonds to where the 10 of clubs was. I'm gonna move my 10 of clubs to where the seven of diamonds was. I have flipped these around and now my seven of diamonds is part of my sorted data. My 10 of clubs is part of my sorted data. So these two items are my sorted data. These have been, these are unsorted because my whole array has not been sorted yet. So I move my next item, the three of hearts. I'm comparing it to my sorted data. So I bring the three of hearts down and I bring the 10 of clubs down and I'm going to pair it to this. Does it does it need to be flipped? And I say, you know what? It does because the Ten of Clubs is less or is greater than the Three of Hearts. So now what I need to do is I need to compare my Three of Hearts to the Seven of Diamonds. So I put these side by side. I say, okay, you know what? The Three is less than the Seven. So I'm going to put my Three where the Seven of Diamonds was. I'm going to move my Seven where the Ten of Clubs was originally. And now... I have three items that have been sorted. I have my three of hearts that is part of my sorted data, my seven of diamonds that is part of my sorted data, and my 10 of clubs, which is part of my sorted data. I now have two items left that I need to compare to my sorted data. So I have the nine of clubs. So I take a look at the nine of clubs and I compare it with the 10 of clubs. I know that nine is less than 10. So I'm going to move my 10 where my nine was, and then I'm going to compare my nine to the seven of diamonds. Now, because I already have a sorted list inside my array, I don't need to compare it to every previous item. Once I find out where it goes, I'm good. So I compare the seven and the nine. I know there's no switch that needs to go there. So I move my nine where the 10 of clubs was. I put my seven back and now my three of hearts is part of my sorted data set. My seven of diamonds is still part of it. My nine of clubs is now part of my sorted data. 10 of clubs is still there. And I have one card left, the ace of spades. So the ace of spades, I take a look at that. I compare it to the 10 of clubs. I don't need to compare the ace of spades to every single item. Once I find where it's not less than something, I just move it back. So the 10 of clubs, I move back the ace of spades. And remember, we are using ace as a high value here. So now I've used an insertion sort and my cards are in order three, seven, nine, 10, and 
ace. So three has been sorted, the seven has been sorted, the nine has been sorted, the 10 has been sorted, and finally my ace has been sorted. So an insertion sort is faster than a bubble sort because you're not comparing to every single item. The advantage is that an insertion sort will move to the correct place and can check more than just its neighbor in the array. We're checking uh, all previous values that have been sorted. And we saw this with the three of hearts. The three of hearts was compared to the 10 of clubs, and then it was compared to the seven of diamonds, putting it in the right place. Now, as the number of items in a list increases, so does the time it takes to do an insertion sort. However, a bubble sort's performance suffers more than an insertion sort as items in a list increase. So if you're going for efficiency, insertion sort is the way to go. So let's go ahead and program. It's nice to know how an insertion sort works, but it's even better when we get to program one. Let's switch to our coding language and code one now. So this is our console application in vb.net. We're just sorting the cards. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. You could do this in a Windows form application. So we're gonna be sorting the cards that we just had in the PowerPoint. We're gonna load them into the array. We are gonna include index zero. We're not, there, this is gonna cause a major issue. Uh, we're not gonna shy away from it. We're gonna dive deep into the issue. We're gonna get that error and overcome that error. It's, it's nothing to shy away from. Uh, we're gonna be using the card's numerical value. So the 10 of clubs is gonna be index zero. That's gonna be represented by 10. The seven, the three, the nine is gonna be represented by their numerical value. Now the ace of spades, we're gonna use value 13 because remember we're playing where the ace is going to be high. Now one way you can load your cards is to dimensionalize cards as an array without a value in the parentheses and then you can uh, front load the array here. I don't like to do that, and the reason, I just want to clearly see quickly where these are. I don't want to have to count, okay, nine of spades, zero, one, two, three, oh, it's in the third index. I just want to be able to glance at it. You can do it however you want. Uh, it will work both ways. Uh, so I'm just going to dimensionalize card four as an integer. I need the current card, which is the current card of where I am, the location where I can determine what location it's being compared to, and then temp, which is also going to be an integer, because I need to record the numerical value if I'm switching, like the 7 and 10 need to switch. Well, I don't want to overwrite the 10 and have two 7s. I need to store that into a temporary variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to output our card, 0 to 4. We're going to say the current output is. We're going to list the card number and then its value. We want to see it unsorted and then sorted at the end. So what we need to do now is jump into the meat of the insertion sort program. We're going to start with the console.read line because what that will do is it will pause the program and we can see the cards uh, while they are unsorted and compare it to them being sorted. So let's go ahead and let's start our insertion sort. We're going to do for i equals 1 to 4. Now remember we said we don't need to compare the 10 of clubs, which is index 0. There's nothing to compare it to. So we start with the second index, which is index 1. And I need to load my current card, which is the 7 of diamonds. So I'm going to do that by taking the card 1, index 1, loading that into current card. And then what I want to do is I want to decrement the uh, location or set location equal to i minus 1. So I want to start, my location is going to be 0. So I'm going to compare the 7 of diamonds, what's in index 1, to index 0. Now, if cards location, that is the 10 of clubs, is greater than current card, which is my seven of diamonds, then I want to flip some things around. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use a while loop. So we're going to say while the location is greater than or equal to zero, it needs to be greater than or equal to zero. We don't need to, can't go negative. And my card's location, meaning my 10 of clubs is greater than the seven of diamonds then what I want to do is I want to switch these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do temp and I'm going to do cards and I'm going to do location plus one. I'm going to save that seven of diamonds. I don't want it to get overwritten. I'm also going to spell cards correctly so it pulls the right item. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do cards location plus one. What are we putting inside index one? That's going to be cards location, which is the 10 of clubs. We're going to take 
cards index zero and put that into index zero plus one into index one. Then what are we gonna put in cards location? What are we gonna put inside uh, index zero? We're gonna put our temporary location. Now we want this to keep looping. So we're gonna do location and we're gonna set it equal to um, location minus one. Just use a compound operator. And then what we need to do, there's one more thing that we need to do and it's after this in while loop, we wanna take location plus one. What do we wanna put there? We wanna put the current card. So that's what we wanna do. And just like that, we are done. We are now done with our insertion sort. So how do we check to see it works? We do for i equals zero to four, the current output is, and all we do is run that same line of code. So let's run this and let's see it work. And it will not work, it's going to crash, and that's okay. So the current output, 10, 7, 3, 9, 13, I hit enter and it crashes and that was expected and that's because we have a major issue here it says we're outside the bounds of the array if you're writing an insertion sort chances are you're going to run into this error especially if you're using index zero and that is because of this line of code right here when we go from zero and we minus one we get negative one well negative one is not greater than to equal is not greater than or equal to zero but then vb also checks this line. Well, that's the problem because cards negative one, that index doesn't exist and we cannot create it. Now in Java, you won't run into this problem. In Java, you can use uh, one ampersand or you can use two ampersands. Most people will tell you this is how you do and. That is not uh, true. I mean, it is true. That's how you use and, but there's also a single ampersand. The difference is with a single ampersand, whether this first a statement is true or not, it will also check the second one. With a double ampersand in Java, it checks the first one, and if the first one's not true, it doesn't even bother checking the second one. It just moves on because the and means both have to be true. So I'm going to put in a double ampersand here, and it doesn't work in VB. Does VB even have a double something? like a double ampersand that Java has, or do I need to change my index zero to index one? VB does have a double ampersand. It does have two forms of and. It has and, but it also has and also. And and also is equivalent to the double ampersand in Java. If this first statement is not true, it doesn't even bother checking the second one. And because it doesn't even bother checking the second one, we'll never be out of bounds. When this location gets set on the very first loop to negative one, negative one is not greater than or equal to zero. And because it's not, it never checks cards negative one. It never checks that. And because it never checks it, our program will not crash. So we run it now. We see our unsorted cards. 10, 7, 3, 9, 13, we hit enter, and because we used n also, which is the double ampersand, the program does not crash. It bypasses that error without a try-catch statement. It, we know for a fact it's not even checking the other one because negative one index doesn't exist. And here's my insertion sort using index 0, 3, 7, 9, 10, and 13. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, Make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. We'll see you guys in our next video.